Good morning and welcome to the chair. My name is Amy Bauman. I'm with For His Glory Ministry and this is our weekly teaching. And I must say this is one of my most favorite days of the week because I get to spend it with you. We get to figure out what chair we're sitting in, look at God's word, hopefully walk away more encouraged and more like Jesus. But if this is your first time joining us today, I'm so glad that you found us online. I pray that it will be a blessing to you. It's a new month, it's May, and it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And this is a month that is kind of after my own heart. If you know my story, you know that I struggled with a mental illness for over 17 years. In 2013, God completely healed me and put me on a brand new path. And as I think about it, I'm 10 years, 10 years healed without psychotropic medication, 10 years of living in freedom and, and what that looks like. And so I have a passion for sharing my journey with other people. I have a passion for shining light into these areas of our life where we're struggling, where we need God to come in and break in and break through for us. So I want to look at that over the course of the month. We're going to be looking specifically at the things that we struggle with, depression, anxiety, uh, those kinds of things give us tools and resources to help um, us align our lives with God's word, to live the best lives that we can live with the gifts that God has given us, especially these bodies. As we start off this month, I want to look at it today from a physiological standpoint. Uh, talk about our physical beings and share a little bit about uh, my journey and I pray that it will be a blessing. But before we get started, let's open with prayer. Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for months like this that we can pay a little extra attention, that we can shine light, that we can focus our attention on things that we struggle with, and in areas of our life where we need help so that we can reach out, so that we can stand together and help each other and pray for each other. And I just pray that over this next month, Lord, you will work and move in these kinds of ways that people will be able to come together and find help and find resources and allow you to work and move as only you can. So I just ask that you be with us today. Holy Spirit, I pray for a fresh anointing that I will speak your truth with love and that you'll open up our hearts and our ears for whatever it is that you have for each one of us. We love you and praise you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Mental Health Awareness Month. My first disclaimer is that I am not a doctor. I do not have an MD behind my name, but like I shared with you, I struggled with mental illness, uh, depression for 17 years. I talked with lots of doctors. I was on medication. I saw the effects of the medication. I saw how all of that worked. So I have something to share, but I want to make sure that you take it as this is my journey and what I've gone through. And this could be totally different than something that you need. I just want to make sure that over this month we focus on mental health. And we are uh, working on aligning our lives with God's word and some things, some tips, some resources that I have um, used over the course of my journey. So today I want to look at it from a physiological standpoint. A lot of people over the years ask me, okay, so what did you do uh, to maintain your health? You know, what did you eat? How much sleep did you get? What kind of supplements or medication did you take? What were your sleep patterns? And when I tell them today that God completely healed me, they're surprised, right? They're like, wow, um, some people I have met have, have you know, been healed. Some people I have met have um, gone into remission. Some people I have met are still struggling. So I want to look specifically at our bodies today and and what God has shown me on my journey and how it all works together. So when you think about it, we truly are a finely tuned machine. 
mean, when you think about all the ways our body works and moves, we take a lot of it for granted. But what's going on behind the scenes is pretty incredible. God truly is a wonderful creator. So when you think about it, we have a circulatory system. We have a digestive system. We have an endocrine system. We have an immune system. We have a lymphatic system, a nervous system, a muscular system, which is then supported by a skeletal system, which consists of between 206 and 213 bones in adult human body, which are all connected by tendons and ligaments and cartilage. We have a reproductive system so that we can have and keep producing. We have a urinary system, which draws out our, our impurities um, and things. We have the skin, which is an integumentary, I knew I was going to fail that one, integumentary system. It's the, it's the body's largest organ, all the skin that covers our body. It protects us from the outside world. It's our first defense against bacteria, viruses, and pathogens. It's truly amazing what our bodies do and how they work. The human body contains nearly 37.2 trillion cells. It's estimated that the microbial biome of our bodies, including bacteria and fungi, is around 39 trillion cells. The average adult takes around 22,000 breaths a day. Each day, our kidneys process about 200 quarts. 50 gallons of blood to filter out about two quarts of waste and water. Adults excrete about a quarter and a half of urine each day. The human brain contains about 100 billion nerve cells and water makes up about 50% of our, of our average adult body weight. So as you can hear and see, there's a lot of moving parts with this bag of bones, right? So what happens if we don't take care of our physical bodies? A lot of times the ebb and flow of our lives, our work, our families, our stress, circumstances, all of that determines our schedule. All of that determines how we live out our days. And sometimes we have too much of something or sometimes we have not enough. We have either too much food or not enough food. We have too much vitamins or not enough. We have too much sleep or not enough sleep. It's hard to find a balance. And each person based on their situation and their lifestyle has to find that own balance for them and how their body works. But let's look at that for a second. For example, the motor of a car, okay? Besides gasoline, the one thing that an engine needs in a car to run is oil. Now, my daughter, if you're watching, Jessie, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> she struggled keeping oil in her car. And so we were constantly telling her, and she had an older car, her first car, you know, sometimes those older engines, they burn some oil. So we were constantly saying, hey, do you got enough oil? Check your oil. And she did have a few issues with her car. But on a normal running car, you know, it doesn't leak oil, it doesn't burn oil. It just needs oil. But too much oil or not enough oil will cause problems. Both are bad. Too much oil and the oil aerates. Oil and air is not a good lubricant. Also aerated oil Cap cavitates the pump, which damage, damages it. Too little, and the system is starved for oil. Air is a bad lubricant. Metal to metal contact will lead to the engine seizing, and then you won't be able to go anymore. So do you see the example? It's, it's too much or not enough, and that's a lot of what we do in our daily lives. It's hard to find that balance and keep that balance. So let's transfer that over to our physical bodies. What happens when you add, let's say, stress to your 
daily routine. Anybody have any stress today? Yeah, I think we all do, right? It's, it's just part of life. There are things that come at us that cause us to be stressed. But what happens when you add stress to these physical bodies? Your nervous system releases a flood of stress hormones, including adrenaline and cortisol, which rouse the body for emergency action, right? Our bodies are prepared almost for this fight or flight. So when the stress comes, the adrenaline is released, the cortisol is released, and our body is like prepared to react, to react in a situation. Your heart, your heart pounds faster, muscles tighten, blood pressure rises, your breath quickens, and your senses become sharper, right? Your body goes into this motion, and how am I going to react in this situation? Well, what happens if we're stressed all the time? Our body is going to be going through all of these things all the time, which is going to throw off the normal way our body is supposed to run. What about when you eat when you're stressed? Now you've got too much, right? Too much calories, too much food. Or you start drinking. What if you add alcohol to that? What if you add prescription medications to that, which have different side effects and cause your body to react differently? We are changing up our bodies and how they are designed to work by all of those things including, you know, lack of sleep. Lack of sleep is a really big thing. Our body needs to rest at night so that it can restore and we can wake up and feel refreshed and renewed. But if we're not sleeping enough, right, it's, we're, we're using some reserves that will eventually run out and, and it's not good for us and our health. When I was first diagnosed with bipolar disorder, back in 1996, I had no idea what that was. I was, it was explained to me that it was a mental illness of the brain. It was explained to me that it was a chemical imbalance. And I didn't quite understand all of that, but after listening to the doctors and after doing some research, there is some evidence that bipolar disorder may be associated with chemical imbalances in the brain. Chemicals responsible for controlling the brain's function are called neurotransmitters and include noradrenaline, serotonin, and dopamine. Chemicals, right? But we just heard that our bodies are made up in such a way that when you add things, it can change how we're working. When you add stress, it starts off some chemicals in our body to make us activate and make decisions fight or flight. I was prescribed medication and that did stabilize me. Why? Because it was stabilizing the chemicals, the extra chemicals in my body, but there were side effects, right? And I was considered med sensitive. So if there was a side effect on the bottle, typically I got it. And it took me a long time to find the right medication that would work for me. But in the meantime, while I was searching, I lost my hair. Not all of it, but enough. It was coming out. Um, I felt like I had bugs crawling on my skin. I gained weight. I lost weight. I mean, I was putting a chemical in my body that was reacting to the way that it had been originally designed to work and move on top of what was already there, all of the stress in my life. And of course, when I went to see my doctors, then they did med checks. They wanted to make sure that I was eating the right foods, that I was eating a balanced diet, that I was getting enough sleep because we need to have our, these engines, these finely tuned machines continue to work the way that they are designed to work. So is it physiological? Yes, in part. God made our bodies in this amazing way, you know, to work. So when people ask me, is sleep important? Yes. Is eating right? Yes. 
not just for our mental health though, but also for just our normal way to navigate day to day to keep our bodies working correctly. Mental health is a part of that. So balanced diet, eating foods that are good for you, rich in vitamins and nutrients, and maybe adding vitamins when um, you need those supplements, that's important. Getting a good amount of sleep every night is important. But here's what else I've learned on my journey. And this is the spiritual aspect of it, right? The enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy is the devil, Satan. And he does not like that we are created in God's image, that we are his image bearers, that we are created with a creative spirit. He has come to steal, kill, and destroy, and he causes dis-ease. Did you catch that? Dis-ease. You put that together, disease. He causes disease. God designed us as his creation to be full of peace, shalom, nothing missing and nothing broken. Nothing missing and nothing broken. Yet when sin entered the world, right, the enemy came to work and move. He brings us dis-ease. So the entire 17 years that I struggled with mental illness and depression, I was also believing all of the lies from the enemy and allowing him to work and move in my life. There was an open door to the enemy that he could come in and do whatever he wanted to me and I constantly lived in a state of dis-ease, stress. Everything was a big deal. Everything was dramatic. And I swung between those highs and lows of the illness. When I was high, I was happy and it was joyful, but then I dove right off the, the cliff and lived in these lows where I was depressed and, and I didn't want to get up and I didn't want to do anything. And all the while I struggled with my past, consequences of my choices, I lived daily with unforgiveness. I didn't forgive myself. I lived in uh, unforgiveness or lack of forgiveness to my parents for their divorce, to my husband at the time uh, who was um, not, not living the way he needed to live. There was all of this dis-ease. And the dis-ease or lack of peace continued to manifest in my physical life. I've talked about that before, right? We're a creative spirit. We're in the image of God, right? God spoke the world into existence and created everything just by speaking it out. And it was good. And so because we are like God that way, we have a creative spirit, what we say matters. And on a daily basis, I walked around and I said it out loud that I was sick, I was depressed, I was discouraged, I wanted to give up, God didn't love me, I was broken. This was what I was speaking out over my daily life when nobody else was around. This was what I was believing. I did not believe that God had a plan and a purpose for my life. I did not believe that he was big enough to heal me. I did not believe that he was able. I believed everything that the enemy told me. I believed that I was unloved, I was unqualified, I was not a good mom, I was not a good wife, that I was never going to get better, and that I was going to have this for the rest of my life. I believed all of those lies. And the day that I was healed in 2013, God touched my life and he healed up those wounds. He closed the door on the enemy and he showed me the lies that I had been believing. And I, it was an eight hour day of prayer. So I was going back through all of these things in my life, the, the really hard moments, the, the bad times, the, those moments of unforgiveness, 
how I thought about myself, how I looked at myself, how I looked at God. And God shined light into all of those areas of my life so that I could live in the freedom of the forgiveness that he wanted to extend to me and what he wanted me to extend to other people. So there was a process. There was a renewing of my mind. There was a closing the door to the enemy. He restored me back to his original design, that shalom, nothing missing and nothing broken. He freed me from the hands of the enemy so that I would no longer live in that dis-ease. So how do we live today? How do we operate? How do I live today? Right? I live today as someone who has been completely healed. I've been off medication for 10 years. I try and eat right. I try and take vitamins. I try to eat food that has vitamins in it. I try to eat good food. I try to have a balanced diet. I try to get and I need at least eight hours of sleep a night, sometimes more depending. And, and if I have a really busy week, then I need to take a nap or catch up because I've expended all of this extra energy on things. Sleep has to be a priority for me. And my husband sometimes goes, how in the world do you lay down and fall asleep in like three seconds? Well, for one, I'm exhausted. But two, when I lay my head down at night, I am resting in God's peace. I don't think about the day. I don't think about what's happening tomorrow. I don't think about anything other than thank you, Lord, that I get to close my eyes now and rest in your perfect shalom. And that's what we need to do. And a lot of times that's hard, right? Because we've just come off a day at work that is like off the charts or we're moving through a family situation right now where it's hard to let go of what's happening. But that's how we live in God's peace is we really need to surrender and trust that God's got us. And for those eight hours, I can sleep and rest in his peace knowing that tomorrow when I wake up, it's another day and then another day and God is going to walk with me and I can have peace and trust in that. I also understand now today that this body works in a certain way and I need to pay attention to whether I'm adding too much or too little. I have to be aware that I'm made up not just of bone and muscle and ligament and all the systems. I have a heart. I have a spirit. And I need to make sure that I am mentally and physically and spiritually well, looking at what I am putting in to this temple, right? This temple that keeps God, that holds the Holy Spirit, that where Jesus lives, I need to be mindful of my temple. Also today, as I sit in this chair, I understand the battle. I understand the enemy. And even though he is under the feet of Jesus, and even though we have already won, and even though I know where I'm going and I know where he's going, Today, until Jesus returns, there is still the battle. He is still going to try and take me off the path. He is still going to try and give me dis-ease. He's still going to come at me or shoot at me fiery darts that I have to block. And I have to put on that full armor of God and fight and know that I am confident in him. I don't ever want to go back to those years where I lived in hopelessness, that I believed that God didn't love me, that I wasn't even aware that I had an enemy. I don't ever want to go back. And that's one of the reasons why I talk about the enemy a lot is that we need to be aware that we have one. We know we've won. We know where he's going. We know where we're going. 
but we have to be aware that we have one who is going to try to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants nothing more than to fill my life again and again with stress and disease and take me off the path that God has for me. But the difference between now and back then is I'm aware and I say, no, you are not going to come into my life and work and move. I throw you down at the feet of Jesus and I am a daughter of the Most High King and that is what I believe today. So what about you? What if you're struggling today with depression or anxiousness or racing thoughts? The first step is that you need to tell someone. The first step is that you need to bring someone in and shine God's light onto what's going on, right? And start praying about it. When your car is acting up, you take it in right? You do a maintenance check. You make sure that you don't have too much oil or not enough oil or that something didn't get into the gas tank or something's not underneath the hood or in the carburetor. When it starts acting up, you take it in because we can't move forward without it operating the way it's supposed to. It's the same with us. When there's something going on, we need to shine God's light into it. We need to bring somebody in that will pray for us. We need to be aware of what's happening. When I'm feeling this way, why am I feeling this way? And, and what's happening right now? And I need prayer. I need to evaluate. And I need to lean into God. Admitting is the very first step. And what I love about God is he doesn't just want to put a band-aid on us right? And a lot of times what we do as humans is we self-medicate. Well, I'm feeling this way, so let's just drink this or take this or smoke this, and this is going to make me feel better. No. God wants to expose the wound. He wants to shine his light into the wound, and he wants to heal the wound so that you are fully restored. God is not a God of band-aids. And we have to get rid of that self-medicating mentality and allow God to show us the wound, to heal the wound so that we can be fully restored. Don't be ashamed. This is not about shame. And the enemy is going to make you feel like you got to keep it a secret. Don't tell anyone. Don't do that, right? The enemy's goal over those 17 years was to keep me isolated and alone and stuck. Stuck in the lies, stuck feeling the same way, stuck in the stress and the dis-ease. No, we need to bring somebody in. We need to, to pray about it. We need to shine God's light into it. My hope over the next month is to just share resources and scripture to help us navigate, to give us some tools and resources that we can use when we get down, when we get depressed, uh, when we get discouraged, when we have anxiousness. These are all real things that we face today, right? I'm, I'm not saying that I don't ever get sad. I'm not saying that I don't ever get anxious about uh, an upcoming event or a situation. It's about navigating through those things, holding God's hand. It's about making sure that we keep a balance in our life. Not too much, not too little. Allowing the Lord to walk with us. And awareness is exactly that. When we talk about mental health awareness, it's being aware. It's understanding. It's being aware and letting God work and move as only he can. Today, if you're struggling, let your first step forward be letting someone know, shining God's light and allowing him to work and move. Let's pray. Father God, I'm so grateful for the chair I'm sitting in today. And I know, Lord, what it's like to struggle. My struggle went on for a really long time. 
And part of it was that I kept listening to the lies. I didn't believe that you were big enough. And Lord, if, if I can say anything today to the people that are watching it and listening, it's that you are big enough. You can heal and redeem and restore. You can put us back on a new path. You have canceled the plans of the enemy and we need to believe that and receive it. So help each of us in our journey, Lord. Each person, Lord, wherever they're at today, allow them to shine your light into their situation. Let them feel your presence in a real and tangible way. Help them take the next step and the next step. We love you and praise you and thank you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need resources, if you need uh, things that will help you on your own journey, you can head to amybauman.com. Uh, my very first book talks about, it's called In Over My Head. It talks about my journey that I struggled with mental illness, how God healed me, how God completely restored me. I also have a couple different devotionals and some workbooks that you can use to walk through depending on where you are at with your journey, letting go of fear, uh, helping you find your identity, finding joy again. My passion is helping other people get on the other side, right? Shine God's light into their situation and allow the Lord to walk them through to the other side. I know what it feels like to struggle and be there. And if you need help, I would love for you to be able to use these resources or you can reach out to me. I would love to pray, pray for you. We offer biblical counseling and coaching and help um, to allow the Lord to work and move as only he can. So thank you so much for being here today and for joining us. Remember, all this month, we're going to be focusing on um, shining God's light into those areas of our life, being aware of mental health and aligning our lives to His. So thanks for being here, for joining us, and until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.